Welcome back. So today we will discuss Borel Cantelli lemmas. So Borel Cantelli lemmas uh, say that if you are given a sequence of events, uh, it it gives conditions under which only finitely many of these events will occur. Okay, I will state it properly now. <coughs> so as usual, you are given a probability space. Okay. Some omega fp is given to you. So, there are two Borel Cantelli lemmas that, uh, that we will study. There are actually a few more versions, but we will study the two most famous ones. Okay. The first Borel Cantelli lemma is the, says the following if a1, a2 dot 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 is a sequence of events such that sum over n equals 1 through infinity probability of a n is finite. Then almost surely or with probability one only finitely many AIs will occur. Let's say ANs will occur. So A one, A two, dot dot dot. This is a sequence of events. Okay, so they're all if measurable. Okay, so all these events will have some probabilities associated with them. So if it so happens that the sum of the probabilities of AN n equal to 1 to infinity is finite, then the BC lemma Borel Cantilly lemma 1 says almost surely that is with probability 1 only finitely many of the ANs will occur. Okay. So, I will help you digest it a little bit better. Uh, first I want to, so there are only two possibilities for this summation right. See probability of AN is a non-negative this is like a non negative sequence right p of an is a non negative sequence so if you sum a non negative sequence n equals 1 to infinity it's well defined it's always well defined right the question is whether it goes to something finite or goes to plus infinity right there are only two possibilities right so the first bc lemma talks about the case when it's finite the second borel cantilly lemma talks about the case when it's infinite okay the we will uh, first deal with in this finite case okay So, I will help you parse what this uh, finitely many ANs occurring means. Okay. And the second Borel Cantelli lemma, I will just state both and then explain, explain both of them. So, this is like a partial second Borel Cantilly lemma is like a partial converse to the first BC lemma. Okay. So, it says that if this is infinite, then infinitely many ANs occur, but not quite. Uh, you need independence. Here, you do not need any independence. Okay.
then almost surely uh, infinitely many areas occur. Okay. So, these two are the statements. First Borel cantilever says if the summation of the probabilities is finite, only finitely many a n's will occur. The second says if the summation is infinity and you have independence, then infinitely many a n's will occur with probability 1, both the probability 1. Okay, so, let us let us try to understand the first Borel cantilever lemma first. Okay. So, you are looking at, so you can look at this guy, so probability of a n as some sequence p n, right, some numbers p n which sum to something that is finite, right. <coughs> so, what you have really is a, is a sequence of events whose probability is going down to 0, because if, a, if a, you know that if a series sums to something finite, the nth term has to go to 0 right that you know, but the converse is not true right. So, you have uh, a sequence of events which is becoming more and more unlikely correct. So, in that case, so it, it is not only true that p n the probability of a n is going to 0, it is also true that the sum is finite which is saying more than that the nth term is going to 0. Right, so you are, you have the sequence of events which are becoming more and more unlikely. Right, and they're becoming more unlikely, rather fast, so that the summation is finite. Right, so which means so this implies that beyond a certain point, beyond some finite, let's say n naught, none of these ans will occur almost surely. There exists some n naught beyond which none of these n all these a's will fail to occur. Okay, because they are becoming so unlikely. Okay. So, that is what this means. So, there so finitely many see finitely many a, a n's will occur means some a n's will occur, but beyond the point there exists some n naught beyond which none of these a's will occur that is what this means. Right. Similarly, for this part if you are talking about uh, infinitely many a n's occurring that means what. So, you go as far as you like as big an n as you like, but beyond that n there exists at least some a n that occurs no matter what n you look at right that is what this finitely many a n's and infinitely many a n's occurring means. Is this okay intuitively everybody with me? So, I will introduce some notation to make this more formal. Okay. So, I want to talk about see I am both these lemmas talk about some event of only finitely many a n's happening or infinitely many a n's happening right. So, I will actually denote that. So, there is a particular notation for it. So, event that infinitely many a n's occur right this is what I want to characterize right. So, I want to write this as some unions and intersections of a i's and that is done as follows you write n equal to 1 through infinity union i equal to n through infinity a i. Okay, so, it is a nested is an intersection and a union okay. and this event is called. So, this is denoted often by a n infinitely often right this is simply notation for this event. Okay, this is an event that we will encounter a few times. So, this is just denoted by a n i o okay. what this means is just this. Okay. <coughs> okay, I will help you pass this in a minute but you will agree that since a i's are events and I am only taking countable unions and intersections what results will also be a event right because this is just countable unions and intersections of these a i's. 
so it has to be f measurable. So, this is also an event and I can genuinely refer to it as some event for which I can assign probabilities to right is that clear first of all. So, what the Borel continuity lemma 1 says is that this event has 0 probability in this case and has probability 1 in the second case that is what the BC lemma says ok. Everybody with me? Of course, I have to explain to you what that that all this intersections and union means, right? So I will help you parse this as follows. So let us have, um, so let us make a definition. Let B n equal to union i equals n through infinity a i, right? Uh, so then. I have a n i o is equal to intersection b n correct. I am just so this guy here this guy here I am calling b n to help you parse it ok. So, whenever you have these nested unions and intersections actually in your homework you will see th three of them in one homework. Uh, here there is just 2 right. What you do is you start from the most innermost union on intersection and then work, work your way out ok. So, I am going to call that B n right. I am indexing it by n because I am starting from n here right. Now, so what is B n can somebody tell me what in words what B n is. At least so B n is the event that at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurs is that clear at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurs that is b n. So, for that reason b n is sometimes referred to as the nth tail event nth tail event right it is saying that oh from n onwards at least one of the a is occurs a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 one of them at least one of them occurs ok. And then what is a n infinitely often? So, it is just the intersection of these nth tail events right. So, this is the event that all the b n's occur for every n b n occurs correct by definition. Now, b n is again the nth tail event which means for every n are there at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurs correct. So, which means no matter how big your n is I will have at least one of the a n's after that n right occurring is that clear. So, no matter how far I go no matter how big let us say my n naught is beyond that n naught one of these a i's will still occur correct is this clear to everybody. So, the first Borel cantilever lemma says that a n infinitely often this event has 0 probability in this case the second Borel County lemma says this event has probability 1 in this case ok. Are there any questions at this point before I prove these results? The proofs are actually fairly elementary once you manage to understand what it is that the lemma says the pro proving it is not very easy it will not very difficult ha huh, yes. So, a i s so this I have defined b n as the union from n to n to infinity. So, this is b n is the event that at least one of a n plus a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurs right for the given n right. So, it is called the nth tail event. So, given n it is the event that at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurs and this is the event that each one of the b n's occurs which means for every n. So, I will say that this event has occurred if each of the b n's occurs which means for every n I must have a at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurring correct for every n I need at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurring ok. Any questions ok uh, proof ok B C lemma 1 is very easy to prove proof see remember that 
first Boole continuity lemma does not need independence or any other further constraints right. If it so happens that sum over n equal to infinity p of a n is, is finite then this will apply only finitely many a n's will occur okay. So, what do I have to prove I have to prove that in the first case this event has probability 0. So, that the complementary event finitely often will have probability 1 see what is the complement of this this will become this intersection will become a union then the union will become an intersection and then you will have a complement right which means there exists an end such that each of the further a i s fail to occur which is where this is what finitely often means right. So, you can just use De Morgan and flip this around if you want <coughs> ok. So, proof the first Borel cantilever lemma. Um, so, you have so, you, you want to look at this right you want to look at probability of essentially this right you want to show this is equal to 0 right and what is the if I see something like this what is the first thing I do I invoke continuity of probabilities correct. Now, uh, this b n s I think this b n s will turn out to be uh, nested nested increasing or nested decreasing b n s are. So, b n is the event that at least one of a n a n plus 1 etcetera occurs. So, b n plus 1 is so, so nested decreasing right. So, these b n s are like Russian dolls you know they are nested decreasing ok everybody with me just think about it if at least one of a n a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurs right that is a bigger set than at least one of a n plus 1 a n plus 2 etcetera occurring right correct. So, I can use continuity of probabilities to write this as probability of agreed this is continuity of probabilities and using the fact that b n s are nested decreasing fine. Okay, so, that is equal to limit n going to infinity probability of my b n is after all union i equals n through infinity a i ok. I have just copied what b n is. Now, I can use union bound on that ok. I have a union of events. So, the probability of a union is less than or equal to sum of the individual probabilities after all I have to get to a sum of probabilities at some point right. So, this is less than or equal to limit n tending to infinity uh, uh, sum over i equals n through infinity probability of a i ok. So, this is union bound this is continuity of probabilities ok everybody with me. So, now the proof is almost over ok reason is I know that the summation this is a converging summation right this converges to something finite and you know that this guy is the tail sum of a convergent series and as n goes to infinity the tail sum has to go to 0 right you know that from your sequences in series right. So, this has to be equal to 0 right as n goes to infinity this goes to 0 ok. So, I have proved what have I proven I have proven that with probability 1. So, with probability 0 the there is probability 0 that infinitely many a n s will occur which means with probability 1 only finitely many a n s will occur right which means beyond a point a n s will all a n s will fail to occur beyond a certain n naught none of the a n s will occur ok. Good ok. So, this is a very simple proof. So, this is hardly 3 steps. 
okay with me any questions okay so now we have to prove second borel cantilever okay second borel cantilever says that it's a partial converse why am i saying it's a partial converse you need independence right it doesn't say that oh no matter how this is the summation is infinite i will always have infinitely many any that is not it what it's saying right you need independence okay you have it's further stipulating independence right uh, the second borel cantilever lemma it's a little bit of it requires some algebraic jugglery here uh, so i will prove a lemma to prove a lemma okay so the second bc lemma i want to prove another lemma to prove it okay so there we go suppose Zero less than or equal to pi less than or equal to one is such that sum over pi equals infinity. Then product i equals one through infinity. One minus p i equal to zero. So this this statement has nothing to do with probability as such. It's just a uh, you're saying that if something if a series sums to infinity, right? The series of numbers you have this p i's which are between zero and one. Uh, you can think of them as probabilities, but it's not necessarily the case, right? It sums to infinity, so then you have this product is zero. Okay. So the proof of this is again just algebra. So we have so we have the following. Okay. So we have log. So it follows from this fact. Log one minus x is always less than or equal to minus x for x in uh 0 1 right this is something you can prove this is just uh an identity this is identically true right for all x in 0 1 so you apply so you take uh, logarithm of this so let me do that so you have log <coughs> product i equals 1 through infinity 1 minus pi equal to log of limit n tending to infinity product i equals 1 through n 1 minus pi so this guy see i want to prove this guy is zero right so i want to uh, i am just taking log okay because it's a product a log of a product just becomes a summation right so this will become so this i am writing as a limit okay so now i have less than or equal to log of pi i equals 1 through k 1 minus pi for all k 
right. So, this can only be bigger right I am only going. So, this is for n bigger and bigger. So, I am multiplying numbers that are less than 1 right. So, if I stop at some point right I will only be bigger right and log is a monotonic function right. So, this is again simple algebra just uh, nothing very deep here ok. Now, what do I do I have log of all this product which is equal to I can write it as log of a product is sum of the logarithms right. I will have sum over i equals 1 through k log 1 minus p i which is less than or equal to sum over i equals 1 through k minus p i right. This is this relationship is because of this guy right. So, first or note that you just say note that here. So, from there you get this ok and this is also true for all k So, taking k to infinity So, if I take k to infinity what happens to this term Ah, yes, I know that sum over pi is infinity. So, this summation will go to minus infinity, it just means the product will go to 0. Okay. So, we have log of all this product 1 minus pi, this way will go to minus infinity, implying the result, right. Okay, so, that is just a lemma to prove the lemma and this lemma has nothing to do with probability it is just algebra right. So, now I want to really prove this Borel Cantilly lemma 2 ok. Uh, actually let me keep this part of the board I will prove uh, number 2 here. So, I have to prove. So, in order to prove Borel Cantilly lemma 2, I have to prove uh, probability of a n infinitely often is what? 1, right? Or I can prove that the complement has 0 probability that is also fine right. So, what I will look at is in fact, the probability of the complement of this guy ok. So, I have 1 minus the probability of a n infinitely often is equal to the probability of union n equals 1 through infinity b n complement agreed. I am looking at the probability of the complement a infinitely often essentially and that I am using de Morgan to de Morgan on this ok. This again this so this I will again use union bound sum over n equals 1 through infinity probability of b n complement ok. Now, I want to prove that this is equal to what I want to prove this is equal to 0. So, I must so in order for this to be 0 I need the only way this can be 0 is each of these b n complements should have 0 probability right otherwise it will not happen. So, uh, yeah so I want to prove that each of these is 0 and therefore, your upper bounded by 0 
which means it is 0, right. So, here I go. So, we have, so you have we will show probability of B n complement equal to 0 for all n greater than or equal to 1. Indeed, fix n and m greater than or equal to n. Okay, then you have probability that intersection i equals n through m a i complement is equal to. So this is so I am taking an inter finite intersection of a i complements. Okay. So, why am I doing that? I want to prove that B n complement has 0 probability and B n complement will have intersection A i complement, but it will, it will go from n to infinity, but I mean eventually I will send m to infinity, okay. use continuity of probabilities. So, uh, so if you look at this <coughs> A i's are independent events, you can prove that if A i's are independent events then A i complement are also independent events, you have to prove it. Okay, you, you do it as a homework. Uh, so, this you will get this what will happen to this? This will product out, right? This will have pi i equals n through m probability of a complement, which is 1 minus probability of a i uh, good. Okay. Now, if I send m to infinity, what happens? So, if I send m to infinity, so look at this very carefully, if I send m to infinity limit m tending to infinity, I will use continuity of probabilities to put the infinity here, okay, which, which will give me probability of B n complement correct and then I will get i equals n through infinity 1 minus p of a i. Okay. So, what I am saying is uh, thus probability of B n complement is equal to limit uh, m tends to infinity uh, probability of intersection i equals n through uh, n through m a i complement. Okay, so, this is by what relation? This is because of continuity of probabilities, right? Because B n complement is the intersection n equals i equals n through infinity a i complement. I am writing it as a limit using continuity of probabilities, and by this relation, I will get this is equal to a product. So, I will put the limit here, and right, so that will become i equals n through infinity. So, I may be skipping one step here uh, 1 minus p of a i. Okay. No, this well okay. So, the statement of the lemma is that almost surely uh, a n's occur infinitely often. Almost surely means so. This almost surely means with probability one. Okay, W p one or a dot s is something that's used interchangeably. It means that the probability of that event is one. Okay. Okay. So far with me. So now this I know what this is. Why? Because I have see, I am going from some n to infinity, but I know that if I sum p of a i from n to infinity, I will get infinity. So by that simple algebraic lemma, this will be this will be zero for for all n greater than or equal to one. Okay. 
by the lemma by the earlier algebraic lemma because this p of a i is sum to infinity right. So, this product will be 0 by that lemma. So, which means for every n greater than or equal to 1 probability of b n complement is z, uh, 0 right which means that guy will be 0 right. So, from here you can conclude that that is 0 because each of this is 0. So, the summation is 0. So, probability of a n occurring infinitely often is 1 ok. <coughs> Everybody with me? So, I will give an example in, in a little bit, but first I want to make sure that you understand the proof. Everybody with me? So, just look over it one more time. It is not it is not a it is not a difficult proof ok. All steps are I mean you use repeatedly use union bound continuity of probability. These are the things that you keep using all the time ok in these these kind of proofs ok. So, I will so in what remains of this lecture I will give an example to illustrate the first B C lemma second B C lemma and I will also illustrate that if you throw away independence you completely throw away independence from the second lemma and you still have this it does not necessarily mean that infinitely many n's will occur with probability 1 ok. So, it is not a complete converse right ok. First shall I do the example. So, do some example. So, the simplest example is so you are looking at whether a sum of certain probabilities goes to infinity or is finite right. So, you have to look for some convergent series or non convergent some something that is going to infinity some divergent series right. So, example See, I am going to toss. So, it is like this infinite coin toss model, ok, except my probability measure is not going to be what we have already studied, ok. So, I am going to toss coins infinitely many times, ok, and my sigma algebra is your familiar sigma algebra, ok, whatever we did, except now the probability measure is not going to be my half the, the fair coin measure, I am going to put something more complicated on it ok. Let uh, P uh, well ok let A i be the event that the ith toss is heads ok as usual right we have studied this look at looked at this before and let p be a probability measure on omega f such that probability of a n equal to 1 over n for all n greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So, I am taking some probability measure which has the property that the probability of the nth toss turning up head is 1 by n right. Uh, So, I will so I so this 1 by n. So, this has the property that summation is infinite right. So, I will later make so sum over 1 by n is infinite. If I make this 1 by n square it is summation is finite you know right. So, uh, 
so if I want to give the example of the first Borel Cantilever lemma, I should probably just give 1 by n square to begin with, right? If I keep 1 by n, it will be an example for the second lemma. So let me keep 1 by n squared. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am not specifying. See, I have not told you what the measure is on the entire sigma algebra. You take whatever measure you want that has this property. Okay, I have not see I only specified measures for a n right I have not told you what the measure is. so you have to do the full uh, the full story right like we did it for the fair coin toss model but I am saying let p be any probability measure which has this property okay you can you can prove that you can you can formalize this no problem but I am all I am saying is so let us think about this intuitively I am saying that I have this infinite coin tosses the probability of the first toss being heads is 1 probability of second toss being heads is 1 fourth say third toss being heads is 1 ninth and so on. So, it is becoming heads are becoming very very unlikely as you go along right the probability of the 100 toss being heads will only be 1 in a 10,000 right it is very very unlikely as you go along. <coughs> so, you have uh, so this is since sum over p of a n is finite actually you if you sum n equals 1 through infinity of p of a n you will get pi square over 6 right it does not matter what value it is right it is finite correct because sum over n equal to 1 infinity 1 over n square is finite. Uh, B c lemma B c lemma 1 implies implies that almost surely only finitely many heads will occur ok. So, all I am saying is that if you are heads are becoming more and more unlikely like 1 by n square. So, in the nth toss the probability of finding heads is only 1 by n square. I am saying that there exists an n naught almost surely beyond which no heads will occur you will get only only tails ok beyond an n naught you will get only tails and with probability 1 there exists an n naught such that beyond n naught there exists only tails ok that is what this is saying. So, heads will stop occurring altogether with probability 1. Correct? Is that clear? Sir, is it like that, or is it at the nth toss heads will not occur? No, 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 no. So, no, no, no. So, statement says almost surely only finitely many heads will occur, which means there exists with probability one there exists an n naught beyond which there will be no heads. Okay. With probability one there will be no heads whatsoever beyond a certain n naught. Okay, and such an n not exists with probability one. Yes. So for any positive, yeah, yeah. So for any n, so for any given n, the probability of heads is one by n squared. But what I'm saying is the what the Borel Cantilever lemma is saying is that there exists some n beyond which you will never see a head with probability one. Right? The set of all, so the set of all the set of all coin tosses which corresponds to having infinitely many heads will have probability it will have measure 0. Okay, the set of all coin tosses in the 0 1 power infinity which correspond to infinitely many heads will have probability 0 okay, that is what this is saying. So, now if you want to tweak it around and make it into an example for B C lemma 2 what do you have to do? So, suppose uh, yeah, so you have to of course, make these coin tosses independent you have to make a an appropriate model in which. So, next suppose p of a n 
equal to 1 by n and that ans are independent. So, you have independent coin tosses now. So, in earlier case you do not even need independence you did not need independence at all right. Now, you are saying that these coin tosses are independent and my probabilities are now 1 over n. So, in my 17th toss the probability of getting heads will be 1 by 17. No, there exists no with probability 1 there exists an n n naught beyond which none of no no heads will occur. That is not what I am saying I am looking at a n infinitely often right I am saying probability of a n infinitely often is 0 I am not looking at probability of a n naught plus 1. See which is why I am saying this Borel Cantillon lemma is very easy to state but difficult to digest right. So, think about it. So, in this case so let me just finish this example. Uh, okay, so, you understand the example. So, you have you are tossing coins independently and the probability of finding heads in the nth toss is 1 over n. Okay, so, here also that heads are becoming more and more unlikely right. So, in the 100th toss the probability of heads is 1 over 100 and probability of tails is 99 over 100. So, it is becoming overwhelmingly likely to see more heads, but according to second BC lemma see since so what I am saying is since sum over 1 over n is infinity and the events are independent right B C lemma 2 implies that almost surely infinitely many heads will occur. So, what you are saying is so if you will just look at this as n. So, let us say this is n equal to 1 and then you are looking far out. So, if you are looking far out if you are looking at some 100 the probability of finding heads is 1 over 100. If you go to 1000 it is 1 over 1000. But what B C lemma 2 is saying is no matter how far out you go you are guaranteed to find uh, with probability 1 you are guaranteed to find at least one head turning up no matter how far out you go. So, although so you may imagine that when n is a million the probability of heading getting head is 1 in a million 1 in a million, but I am saying that if you look at million million plus 1 blah 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 the rest of the tail events the, the tail event there will be one head popping off somewhere with probability 1 ok. No matter how far out you go you can go to a million or billion it is becoming more and more unlikely, but if you look at the entire tail there will be at least one head popping off ok. So, this is a highly non trivial result I want to uh, this is not something that you can easily predict with some elementary probability calculation right. So, if you have 1 by n you get infinitely many heads occurring although it is becoming more and more unlikely, but if you make it 1 over n power 1 plus delta then the series will converge then the heads will stop occurring altogether right. So, this 1 over n is this transition point right ok. So, the probability of heads is not 1 over n, but 1 over n plus n power 1.001 then heads will stop occurring almost surely because the series will converge right. So, I hope this example is clear think about it ok it takes some time to digest. So, the, the final point I wanted to make is that uh, you cannot completely get away from the independence in the B C lemma 2 ok. For example, if you take uh, you fix any event E ok whose probability is strictly be between 0 and 1 strictly between 0 and 1 and you take all your a n's to be equal to that E right all your a n's are equal to that event E then sum over probability of a n will be definitely infinite right because you are summing something between. So, that will be infinite, but still the probability of infinitely many a n's occurring will be 
simply the probability that E occurs because all the ANs are equal to E right. So, you cannot just throw away this independence, but it is also true that you do not strictly need independence right with independence the BC lemma 2 works, but you can make a slight relaxation on that independence also okay, which is why there are many Borel cantilever lemmas, okay, but we will only worry about the 1 and 2 okay. 1 does not require any structure 2 for 2 we have independence okay, you cannot throw away thank you we will stop here.